Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you uh, file and storage services role. Uh, this is the chapter, this is chapter 8 of, uh, of this book that we are uh, going through. So in this chapter I'm going to show you how to deploy storage spaces, provisioning, managing storage, and then we're going to go through configuring iSCSI storage. Now first of all, um, First of all, we need to understand that all of the storages start from a central desk. Now, if, you, if you're trying to understand storage in Server 2012, so this is Server 2012 I'm logged in. In this, where do you see the storage? The storage, normally we use it as a disk. And if you go to computer, this is what the complete storage is at the moment in this server. It has one disk in it. And in this disk, there is an operating system in this. And if I look at the properties of this disk, it tells me that this is NTFS file system. And, uh, and uh, 15 GBs of the disk is used, and 44 GBs is free. So this is, this is I mean, all of the storages start from a simple disk. Now, now all of the servers, or all computers, they all come with a one disk, local disk. Most of the time, it's just one disk. Then we can start adding more disk. In Server 2012, uh, we can do, we can, we can, we can add more disk. We can do more than, uh, we can use multiple disks to be used as a disk pool and then we can divide those disks into many different partitions uh, as required. Now, what does that mean? Now, that simply means is that in Server 2012, there is a role called File and Storage Services, which is basically dedicated to uh, file, and, uh, file and disk operations. One more time, how do I go to this? In order to manage storage in Server 2012, we need to go into File and Storage Services. Now, this role is by default added. In fact, that's the default role available on Server 2012. So in order to manage a storage, we need to click on this role. And then uh, the very first thing, it shows me how many servers I'm managing from this one server, so which is itself. I can, although I can manage other servers from this as we have seen in our previous videos. Now, secondly, how many volumes are there? A volume is volume is said to be a formatted disk. So for now, there are, there are two volumes. One is a system reserve volume, which is automatically created by our operating system. We don't touch this disk. We don't, you won't even see this here. So if I go here within computer, I don't see the system reserve volume disk, although I do see this C drive right here. So this is, now, in other words, volume is, uh, is a formatted disk. Now, what is a formatted disk? In order to understand formatted disk, we, we must understand a disk itself. So a disk is a device on which we, uh, we store information nowadays, a basic example of a disk is a USB disk, USB drive, where we store information and we move it from one computer to another. Uh, now, the very first time when you buy a new disk, that disk is known as a raw disk, and the raw disk is not usable. A raw disk is not a usable when you buy a new disk. The disk must be formatted and to make it usable. So when you buy a new disk, it will appear here within the disk. For now, it shows me there is only one disk and that disk is online. Now, this disk was formatted and it became C drive here. So this disk became C drive. And so, so how do we work with new disk? So in order to work with new disk, let's add some disk to our, to the server. How do you add a disk? You right click here on the server and then you go to settings. And within settings, it shows me what is the hardware attached to this server. So it has memory, processor, hard disk. It has only one disk at the moment. Let's add another disk. Now, in real servers, 
you would go to a vendor, buy a new disk, and then attach it to that server. Since it is, we are doing it in virtual machine, so I went into the settings of the server, and I'm going to add one disk. Let's see what happens. So you add a disk, and then you go to dr hard drive, next, and next. Here it asks you how much disk capacity do you need. So let's say this disk is 10 GB. We need a disk of 10 GB. And rest is just leave as is. And you press OK. In few moments, as soon as the new disk is added to the server, you need to refresh here. As soon as you refresh, there should be a new disk. Uh, there should be a new disk uh, shown here, which is which is this one, 10 GB disk. Now, this disk, to start with, most of the time, you would find this disk to be an uh, offline disk. It won't be an online disk. Now, it was online disk, because previously I, t I, I made few disks on this server that got deleted. But since I created a disk with exactly the same name as previous disk, that's why it was online. But if you're working on a new server, when you add a new disk, it will be, it won't be, it will be offline. Now, offline simply means the disk is not usable. This is a raw disk. In order to make it usable, what you need to do, you need to right-click on this and bring it online. Now, once you make it online, it is not enough. Right after making it online, you need to make it you need to make a volume out of this disk in order to make it usable. Now, if I go to my Windows computer, I do not see a second disk here, although I've added a disk. Why? Because this disk that we added, it's a raw disk. In order to make it usable in Windows Explorer so, you, so that you can store files and folders in it, all you need to do is you need to right-click and create a new volume. You can create a new volume from here, or if it is selected, you can select here to create a volume as well from here. So let's create a volume. Once you create a volume, it's telling me, okay, so this is the server, and there is only one disk available, and that is 10 GB. So we're going to say, okay, I'm, I am going to create a new disk. Now, it might use minimum disk size can be, of any volume can be 8 MB, and maximum size is according to the size of the disk. Now there are few uh, uh, now there are few few you can say megabytes are used by the system itself to manage the volume. That's why instead of 10 GB you see 9.97 GB. So I'm gonna create a volume and next the drive letter will be signed as E uh, now, here, if you want to name this volume something, you can name it uh, accordingly. So here, I'm going to name it E Green VOL1. So I'm going to say this is volume 1 of e, e Green. And next, and create. So it is creating a disk. So, so it is created. Just to verify this disk, let's click here, and it shows me there is a disk here. And plus, if I now go into here, I can see this drive. So this is how we add and make a disk usable. Let me do it again uh, with another disk. So this time, we add another disk. So how do you do it? First, go into this, go into settings. And within settings, you need to go into add, add new disk. We'll ask you what you want to add. I'm adding a new disk, and again, this disk will be 10 GB, and let's add a new disk. As soon as the new disk is added, you would press refresh. Once refresh is passed, you will see another disk. So there is another disk. Again, it's offline. Why? Because it's a raw disk. We need to make it online, number one. And secondly, we can, uh, we can create a volume. When you're creating a volume, so I've created a volume, and then let's name it. So this is E Green V O L zero two, and create it. So now created a second disk. So in order to use any disk on a on server 2012 or 2008, you must uh, first bring it online and then create create a volume. So this is concept number one. 
Now, in in Server 2012, there is new thing that is known as storage pools. What storage pools are? Storage pools provide us with the ability to combine many disks together and then use them accordingly, or maybe partition them or manage them from from one place. Now, storage pool. In order to have a storage pool, you must have lot of uh, you must have offline disk. Storage pool can be made from one disk. Storage pool can be also made from 10 disk, 20 disk, 100 disk, whatever number of disk you, you need. So for now, as you can see, if I go to a storage pool, I do not have anything in uh, primordial storage. What is primordial storage? Primordial storage is a storage uh, of, uh, uh, of available off, uh, offline disk. So if I would have had available, so for now I have three disks, but all are online, they cannot be used to make pool. Now in order to make storage pool, what I, in this example, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add three new disks and then create a storage pool. So let's create three new disks here. We'll go to again settings. And then we'll go add here. So you can create, when you're creating adding a disk, you can create a disk of any capacity. Here, I'm gonna create a disk of six GB. Now, storage pool cannot be made of any disk less than four, four GB. So do not create any disk that is less than four GB. So in my case, I'm gonna create a disk of six GB. And you go to next, and so one disk is added. I'm gonna add two more disks to create a storage pool. And again, this is 6 GB. One more disk to be added. And disks are added. So now, what you need to do is press refresh. The disks will be available. And now we should be able to see three more offline disks available. So here it is just, so three offline disks. If I make them online, if I need to use this disk, I need to make it online, and then I'll create a volume out of it. But these three disks we have added to make a storage board. So how much is this? So six, six, and six. He says 18 GB of disk available. If I go to a storage pool now, and if I refresh here, so here, primordial storage, there are three disks available to create a storage pool here. So disk three, four, and five, which is each six GB. What I can do is I can right click on this and create a storage pool. Now, when you create a storage pool, it will ask you the name of the storage pool. Let's name it eGreen uh, Storage Pool 01. I'm gonna call it Storage Pool 01. And I can use all three disks, or I can use two disks, and then create another storage pool. Let's create, let's add two disks here. So two disks are added. And then next, and create. So I'm gonna create a storage pool with a combination of two disks available. So storage pool is created. Now how much capacity do I have? So combined capacity of the two disks is 10 GBs here. Uh, now, once you create a storage pool, the storage pool is not usable unless you create a virtual disk. So let's create a virtual disk. Now, what is the goal? Our goal is to uh, our goal is to make the disk available within computer. So I don't see any disks here. These are the two disks that we created in the last example. I need some more disks from the storage pool. So now, since I do have a storage pool, first of all, create a virtual disk. So I'm gonna create a virtual disk here. And we'll name this virtual disk as eGreen VD01. So this is my virtual disk. Now storage pool, as I said, is not usable unless you create a virtual disk. So you created a virtual disk. And virtual disk is a, can be created as a simple mirror parity. Simple virtual disk is uh, a virtual disk that, that would uh, store data in two disks and it will give you high performance, uh, uh, high speed for the data read and write. Whereas mirror, in mirror, 
the data will be stored in again two disks, but in mirroring, it will give you a duplicate data in the other disk. If one, if one disk goes down, the second disk will automatically tick in and it will be used. Parity I'm gonna explain in, in another lecture, in another video. So in our case, we're gonna select just a simple disk, then next. And here, what type of provisioning do you need from the simple disk? We're gonna go with thin provisioning. Now this simply means is that <clears throat> that the amount of data I'm gonna take from the pool, because I'm creating a virtual disk out of this pool. So the amount of data that I'm gonna take, which is the next question, it will ask me, how much disk do you need from 10.5? Let's say if I, if I take five GBs from 10.5, it won't take immediately 5 GB from this uh, from this storage pool. It would use it would take only what it is using. So it it it, it would it won't take 5 GB. But if I go with six and take 5 GB out, six means that it will immediately take 5 GB from the pool. So in our case, we're going to go with thin provisioning. And you go next and next is how much size do you need? So for now, 10 GB is available. I'm going to say I need 4, 4 GB out of 10, and next, and create. Now, as soon as it is created, it is asking me, it creates a second wizard. Let me see if I cancel, if I cancel this. Now, virtual disk is created, which is 4 GB. Virtual disk is created, which is 4 GB. Now, this virtual disk is still not usable. How? I still cannot see this unless I create a volume out of this. And this is what we discussed before. Volumes are disks that are formatted. So, in pool, when you create a pool, the pool is available, but this pool is not usable unless you create a virtual disk. So, I created a virtual disk. Now, from this virtual disk, I need to create a volume. So, new volume. You would go to next, and it's saying, okay, so now you have two disks available. This is one disk that we never used for the pool, uh, for the for the storage pool, and this is what is available from as a virtual disk. So I'm going to select this one, and then the capacity is maximum this and next, and this will be a G drive. And once you finish, and once you finish, you close this. And then right here, just to verify, we, I do see a G, a G. So this one, these two were simple disks. I mean, these two were disks individually added and then formatted. But this is now from my storage pool. Now let's go back to storage pool and see how much is left. So out of 10 GB, I still have 8 GB available. Now you would ask, I took 4 GBs, it should have been 6 GBs available. So this is, this. the reason is because this is thin provisioning. It did not took 4 GBs from this, but it just took whatever it needed. So now I'm gonna create another disk from the storage pool. In order to you create another disk from the storage pool, you again need to create a virtual disk. And then next, and next, you name it. So here we're gonna name it E green. Uh, VD02, and next, again, it's going to be simple, and it will be thin provisioning. The size, I'm going to take it, let's say, 3 GB. And it's done. Now, it automatically starts this visit. This visit doesn't start automatically. Then you can right-click on this second disk we just created and create a new volume. I'm going to create a volume right from here. And in this case, I'm going to select the virtual disk I just created, which is this one, and next, and just leave it selected. It will be H volume, and it's going to create a new volume for us. So this is the advantage of storage pool. You, in, in servers, you can add 10 disks together and create a storage pool and then keep on creating this as you need. So maybe your marketing department need 5 GB, take 5 GB from your pool and give it to them. Your HR department needs 10 GB, take a disk from your 10 GB and give it to them. So storage pools are used in this manner. Now, uh, now we, I still have, I still have 
physical disks available. So this storage pool is using two physical disks. This storage pool is using uh, this is primordial storage. So primordial storage means this is available to be created as a as a storage pool. And in this, I have only one disk available. So I'm, I can create a storage, another storage pool from this. So let's create another storage pool. And I'm creating another storage pool, E green. ST storage, sorry, ST02. I'm just naming it properly so that I know which storage pool is this. And the only disk that's available is this. I'm going to go to next and create a storage pool. Now another storage pool is created, and as you can note, see primordial storage is not available. Why? Because I do not have any more offline disks that can be used to create storage pool. So I have one storage pool that is available. It is a combination of two disks, and I have two volumes created out of this storage pool. A second storage pool, which is just one disk and no virtual disk available. My question to you is. Can we create, can we use this storage pool to store files? And if your answer is no, you're 100% right. In order to use this storage pool, you cannot use it unless you create a virtual disk. And virtual disk is, is created as volume. So I'm going to create a new virtual disk. So I'm going to say this is eGreen VD03. And next. It will be simple, thin, and here I'm going to say I'm going to use all 5 GB, create. So now it's saying create a volume. Once you create a virtual disk, you must create a volume. It will be iDrive. And we successfully created a volume. In order to verify, just need to go here, and this is from virtual disk 4. That's sorry, virtual disk. This is from ST2, storage pool 2, and it's a virtual disk 1. Maybe you want to label them. I can label them here. I can say this is a disk from ST02, and it is from VD01, VD01, and VOL01. So with this, it shows me that this is from storage pool 2, and this is VD01 and volume 1. Here, this was, and here this was, again, this was a G drive. It was a, it was a I drive. No, it's a which drive? What? H drive. So H drive, I'm going to rename it. This is, this was a disk from SP01, and it was, this 02 and volume number one from virtual disk two. Actually, volume number two from virtual disk two. So name. You can name it. You can leave them. It's all up to you. So this is how we create virtual disk. Now next thing here is shares. Now shares are available. You can share these disks so that these disks can be accessible from this disk. All of these type of disks are still internal disk. If I want these disks, let's say uh, this G should be used from here, I can create, I can share this disk. In order to share the disk, you can right click here and you can go to property. Actually, you can create a share right from here. Or you can go to properties, you can also share it from here. You can share it. Uh, for example, if I share it, let, let, let me not share it from here. Let me show you current shares on this server. On this server, currently, there are three shares, NetLogon, and this share, uh, REM, and install share, REM install share, and syswall share. Now, these shares are automatically created. NetLogon is here, and syswall is here because this is a domain controller. And this share is due to WDS, because we do have WDS here. If I need to share another disk, let's say I need to share uh, this drive, G drive, with other, other computers, I can right-click on it, and I can say, so properties, sharing, go to advanced sharing, and here say share, share G drive, and you click OK, and done. So this one is shared. As you can see, there is an icon is changed. And right here, if you come here, 
it should show me that G drive is shared on this computer. So here it's showing me G drive is shared on this computer. Now, if I need to create a share right from here, what I can do is I can right click here or right click here, create a new share. Now, once you're sharing, there are these different types of share. Majorly, there are two types, SMB share or NFS share. Now, SMB, wherever you see the word SMB, SMB stands for Service Server Message Block. Now, these three shares can only be used on Windows machines. Whereas these two shares can only be used in Unix and Linux machines. NFS means Network File System. So these two are for non-Microsoft machines, Unix machines, Linux machines, Mac machines. Whereas these three shares are for Windows machine. And here you can have a quick type of share or advanced share or application share. In a quick type of share, it's just a basic share it is suitable for file sharing, advanced option to be configured later, properties. So this is just a very simple share. Uh, whereas this one, in this, if you take this as a share, uh, then in this you can set up, uh, you can set up uh, quotas for users, uh, enable quotas, that I can say that if this is shared, uh, user John can only use uh, one GB from this share or user Dave can use uh, 5 GB from this share. So you can go with this. And this special share is used by applications such as Hyper-V or other databases share. For now, I'm going to just create a quick share. Once you create a quick share, it's saying, OK, so you have many disks available. Which disk do you want to share? So we already shared G drive. And this time, I'm going to share H drive. And I'm going to go next. Here's share name. <coughs> I can use is at H, or you can call it a shared H drive. Shared H drive. Shared H drive. It's better not to have spaces. I'm going to remove spaces. Shared H drive. Now this, this, uh, this, uh, 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 in this, uh, in this screen, this is the most important thing. If another server, you need to access this share. If from another server you need to access, you need to run this command. So I'm going to copy this here and then click Next. And then here, leave there as is, and then Next, and Create. Once it is all created, I can see this share, but how do I access it from this server? So you go to the next server, you log in. Uh, it's better to log into a domain. This is we not logging into a domain. I'm going to move. Uh, go back and other users. Here I'm going to use the green slash administrator. <clears throat> and right here, I'm going to use the password and log in. Once it is logging in, so it logs in. Now I need to see connect to the other share on this server. There are a few ways we can do that. So shares are all here. And I need to connect it from. So that's why we shared them, so that other computers can access the share. Now make sure that these all can ping each other. Firewalls are not on, and all that in order to in order to access them. Okay, so it logged me off. Let me try that again. Now, in order to access that share, all you need to do, go back to start screen here. And here, just start writing double backslash. As soon as you write double backslash, then write the name of this other server. And the name of my other server is SRV1. And enter. As soon as you do, it will automatically show all the shares available. So G, we just made. And we also made this share. This, this is one way of connecting to other computer shares. One more time. Let's do it together. So go to start. And within this screen, anywhere, start typing double backslash as soon as you do. And then type the other server name. Make sure. Now, at this point, let's say if I type a wrong name. As soon as you do, it will give you an error message. So it's giving you, if it is giving you error message like this with the right server name, it might be that you're, you're not able to ping that server. Maybe they're not in the same network. 
So troubleshoot that and fix that. Maybe firewalls are on. Here I deliberately showed you with the wrong name to show you the error message. Now I'll go back again and here type the correct server name. So one, enter, I can see all these shares. This is one way of doing it. Now second way of doing it is just by running this command. So double backslash and then slash and the share name. Once you do write that share name properly, so here as soon as you do, and then type slash, it will show you all the shares available, you can directly connect. For example, now from this server, if I create a file here, I'm created a file. So file, I'm gonna say this is file, created from SRV2. And so I created that file here, but where is it being created? It is being created on server one. So if I go in this and go to G drive here, sorry, it's not in G drive, it was in H drive. So here, inside the share, here is the file. There is your file, the file that we just created. So this is how we work with storages. So in this video, guys, we have seen that how to work with uh, file and storage services in Server 2012. We worked with a single disk, then we added more disk, and we created a storage, storage pool. Out of storage pool, we created volumes, we verified the disk, and then at the end, we created shares. In the next video, I'm going to show you what is iSCSI, how to work with iSCSI. I would say strongly recommend that do this exercise, whatever I, uh, the steps that I did, follow these steps and do this few times on two or three server. Maybe create another brand new server and repeat these steps. Create another server, repeat these steps in order to be fluent working with this. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video.